how you doing? Hey, this is Adam from Plex Scott. So uh, yeah, just doing some updates on the website. But anyways, you're here because we're talking about PG Vault backup. So relatively simple. Plex Guide was first developed without a backup and restore system. And we kind of led the charge on it by utilizing uh, Google Drive originally. And with this now, PG Vault, you will be able to upload and download your data in a confident manner with full situational awareness. So this requires 7.54 and up. And with this, for a lot of you who are new to it, um, you will definitely enjoy this. For legacy users, this will be pretty easy to use, I think. Um, the only thing that you have to keep in mind is that in order to use it, you must have PG Blitz or PG Move deployed. In the future, there should be a PG Drives option, option where it's only like a read-only server, so you can use that too. There will also be an update that will add PG Vault Express, and in that one, you will be able to, when you start a new server, you will not have to download uh, everything and anything. It will ask you, do you want to recover a prior server? And you just pop in your authentication and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and bring up PlexGuy. And so we're going to go to tools. We're going to pick PG Vault. And then you can see that there's several options here for you to make your life easy. If you are an older Plex Guide user, you notice that there is no ID for the other server that you're targeting. Originally, again, when Plex Guide was built, you could only, um, well, only use update and restore one server. So if you overwrote your old server, you were screwed. So in that, we created IDs. The only reason you see an ID here is because this is showing you the current server ID of your current server in case you want to change it. So. This is something that you've already established in the beginning, so this shouldn't change. The only reason you're changing this is because, well, you're just wanting to create a new server backup name. So if you change this and you already have prior backups, you will have to basically back up from two different servers, which is something that's not really ideal. This right here, the processing location, what this is, is this is where your um, zip file, your files are going to be zipped at uh, and be uploaded from to Google Drive. So keep in mind that when you're conducting a backup or running cron jobs, you want to have enough disk space. So if you have a 40 gig disk and your Plex is 20 gigs, it's kind of an indicator that your zip file is probably going to be like 10 and you're going to run out of space. So if you need to change your location, you can. This only is useful if you have a second location, a second mount. Uh, Plex Guide does not do that for you. Um, you have to format your own disk and kind of go through the whole lovely process once it's readable by Linux where you can just type LS and whatever and get to it, you put that data location here for us. And basically all your cron jobs, like everything that downloads your backups, your stores will operate out of this, this space. And the reason I'm explaining that is because I just want you to understand. So this is going to be a relatively simple process. So right now I only got two programs up. So if you, well, or it's not running, then, well, actually, no, it doesn't base on what's running. It's actually basing off what files you have available. So, yeah, correct me <laughs> on that. So, okay, so we're going to go ahead and do NZV Git. And like PG Box, it's going to queue up. So, NZV Git. And then I'm just going to do Portainer just to kind of for shits and giggles. And then what we're going to do is going to hit, hit deploy. And what it's going to do is it's actually going to show you everything. So, here you can see the files it's backing up. There's the transfer. And the reason nothing is transferred is, is because I have a prior NZV git file there. That's the exact same. So if the file's the same, it's not going to transfer, which is kind of a good thing. So you're not wasting bandwidth. See, so there's changes there. You can see that the transfer has occurred. And now that the process is pretty much complete. Pretty simple, right? So while I have you here, what we're going to do is we're just going to install a new app. And this is just kind of extra, just as a you know, confidence builder. So we're just going to go ahead and do radar. And we're going to go ahead and do, what else we got? Medusa and deploy. And this is the installer. 
be mindful that in this new update too is that if you have prior cron jobs prior to 7.54, you have to run them again. And the reason for that is is because there's a new file. Uh, there's a new file that handles the cron jobs. It was needed because of the way the system runs. Um, while we're waiting, I just want to say thank you to all again, all the people, the community for helping out, comments, the mods helping, the donations, uh, starting the project, um, liking the videos, commenting on them. So again, this is a freelance project and it's just meant to help others. Um, and I say this in several videos and I, I say that to heart because when I started this project, I didn't know anything about Linux. And as most of you who are pretty much probably watching this are new to Linux or somewhat familiar, but because it's overwhelming, uh, people tend not to be very helpful. So I was like, F this, let's make something and we got it going. So here we are. <laughs> so you can see that the deployment system is pretty efficient. Um, and the good thing is because uh, PG Vault kind of mirrors what PG Box is, there's familiarity. Okay. And now we're just going to run one last test. And again, this is just a confidence builder. We're going to go to PG Vault and do data backup. And you see how we have more containers there. And the purpose is just to show you that it works, right? <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and do Medusa. NZB get and radar. And then I'm going to do deploy. And you notice right here, this is a little bit different. It says stopping Docker container. So if the Docker container is running, it will do that just to make sure everything's good to go. So it backed up the data, it zipped the file, it restarted your Docker container. Now it's moving everything across to the Google Drive. And now it's repeating the process. So that's pretty much all there is to it. So again, I appreciate your time. You have a good one.